Hello, if you're watching this, you chose um, to work on a cubist cat or dog. Um, hopefully you watched and learned a little bit about Picasso and his dog Lupito. Um, but more importantly, that Picasso was really famous for inventing cubism. He's known as the father of cubism. And cubism is trying to show an object or a person or whatever you're drawing or looking at from all different angles. It's a real different way of looking at something. So you can see I've already drawn um, a cubist dog and underneath it I have my cubist cat. So um, we're going to work on this together. I don't want yours to look just like mine. Um, if you want to draw along with me that's fine or you can watch this through to the end and then draw but please make sure yours looks different than mine. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm using a smaller piece of paper so you can see under the screen. The first thing we're going to do is decide if you want to do a cat or a dog. So that's your first decision. Um, I think I'm going to do um, a dog. So on your paper somewhere, I want you to draw an eye. Now it could be just a circle with a black dot. It could have an actual eyeball shape to it. I'm going to do a circle with a black dot, make that black dot kind of big. So there I do an eye. Then you're going to turn your paper 90 degrees. And now you're going to draw another eye, and that eye should be quite a bit bigger than the first eye. And it can be in a completely different spot. Then you're going to turn your paper again, and you're rotating it 90 degrees. And now I want you to draw um, a, an ear. So with a dog, I've had to decide if I want a pointy up ear or a small floppy ear or a long floppy ear. I'm going to do a small floppy ear. And I'm going to do it kind of right off the eye like that. Then you're going to turn your paper again, and you're going to somewhere on here make a nose. And I can even, I can go like that. Okay. So once you have two eyes, an ear, and a nose, turning that paper all around once, then you've got to start trying to connect all of these in a way that kind of puts the dog together, but in a really interesting way. So I'm going to do this. And then I might put another ear here. And then I'm going to connect up here. And I want to do all those parts of a dog. There's a paw. I'm going to do his tongue, maybe coming out here. Um, and you can keep turning your paper as you do this, too. I'm going to do another paw coming right here out of his nose. I'm going to do another paw coming out that way. I might do another paw. like that. And then I'm going to do a line that goes here. And then maybe I'll do a tail. So there's my kind of strange cubist dog. And then you can go in on the inside and you can add some more lines that connect things and just make things look a little more interesting. I'm going to do like that uh, shape on the inside of his ear, maybe if you want your dog to have spots. And notice I'm not doing everything curvy lines, I'm doing some very straight edge lines. Um, maybe I want to put a spot around one eye. Ooh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go outside the nose line to do that spot around one eye. That's kind of cool. So now we're going to move on to adding color. So I'm going to add color using oil crayon. And as I use oil crayon, I really want to think about um, how I'm doing it. I don't want to do it in the middle and then smear my hand across it. So I'm going to start on one end and work this way. 
and I'm going to work on just the dog first, not the background. Um, also, you can really limit your color choice. You can pick a color group. Um, I think I'm going to pick cool colors for my dog, which are green, purple, and blue. Um, so I'm going to go in and really nice and neat color in these sections. Now, if you go over that Sharpie line a little bit, no worries, because we're going to go back in later with a black um, oil crayon and, and kind of fill that in. If you want something white, you just leave it white. And I'm pressing kind of hard to fill in. Um, I'm going to do my dog's head purple here. Now, because I'm doing only cool colors, that feels very limiting. Um, if you want to add like another color in for small details, like I may do um, yellow for the inside of the ears or pink or red for the tongue, that's fine. You just want the majority of your Cubist dog to be a color group. Warm colors are good. Cool colors are good. Primary colors are good. Secondary colors are good. And then if some of you remember from last year, um, third and or actually fourth and fifth graders should remember analogous colors which are color neighbors. So I'm going to continue working on adding color to this dog and then when I come back we'll see it close to being finished. So I'm back and I finished coloring my cubist dog. I started here and I worked this way. I still got a few little smudges on the outside but that's okay because I'm going to work um, to color the background as well. I'm going to choose um, a background color that is opposite of what I've done to really make the dog stand out. For instance, I've used mostly cool colors on this dog and so I want to do warm colors or a warm color to make the dog stand out. You can do the background a few different ways. If you want to go back in with your marker and break up the background into a few more smaller shapes, you absolutely can do that. I think that's what I'm going to do. Or you can color the background one solid color. I think I'm going to break this background up into just a few different shapes just to make it a little more interesting, make it a little more cubist. Okay, that looks good to me. So I'm going to choose one or two colors um, that I didn't use for my dog because if I start using the same colors I used for my dog, I'm going to lose my dog in the picture. And I'll be back. 